This episode of Knife Chats with Tobias is grudgingly brought to you by Skip the Show's Volcano Club due to a financial contract. While we're sponsoring Knife Chats with Tobias, pretending to be William's Knife Life is beyond me. But here you go. So I was in the uh, basement going through a box and I found this old uh, SMKW catalog from uh, April 2010 and thought what the heck I can uh, try and pretend I'm a, a cool guy like Williams Knife Life and go through the magazine with you. Uh, what I did was I took a bunch of pictures of it and I just put it together. So well, let's see uh, how this goes. Uh, one of the main reasons I still got it is, is if you can see right up here in front is the uh, exclusive Bill Lewin canoe this is the one i never managed to get this is the very first one that came out uh way back in 2010 and then they started making them for a while and they stopped and then they came back and did them again but there you have it um uh, right down here it says only 500 knives made so there's only 500 of them made that time and there were five of them with the golden brass on it uh, and if you got one of the golden bass on the, uh, on the, uh, shield, you want an, um, uh, an Abu Garcia rig and a rod and reel that was valued at $450. My usual reel costs about 30 bucks. Moving on to the next couple pages, well, it's uh, once again buck, uh, which is typical. If uh, if you got a buck knife on the first uh, on the cover of the uh, SMKW magazine, usually they go right into buck knives. If there's a case on the front, then they go into case knives and stuff like that. Usually, though, the the prime area in a SMKW uh, catalog, uh, the very first few pages, it's usually devoted to case, but this time it's going to be buck. And uh, you see a couple knives here in the uh, Buck Silver Creek. Uh, the folding fillet knives. Uh, let's see here. Zoom in a bit. Uh, there we go. The uh, the Silver Creek folding fillet knife and the Buck Silver Creek fishing knife here, which was later called a bait knife. I got both of those. And uh, paid a little less than that, actually. I didn't buy them at SMKW, but I got them both on uh, on uh, eBay. Uh, I think probably from Ecop or something. But both of those uh, pretty decent knives. They use 420J2 tool steel there. Yeah, well, Todd Boone calls it 420J2 tool steel. It's just uh, an inexpensive stainless steel. And there you have the Eco Light. This is the one with paper stone. It was made out of recycled garbage. I remember those, man. They were pushing those hard. Those were pretty cool. Probably should have grabbed a paper stone. Flipping over here. Topps Buck Collaborations. Yeah, I remember those too. Uh, I don't know what happened with that. The big ones down here, though, the, the Buck Pack Light series. Yeah, this is when they were new. The Buck Pack Light series uh, just came out, and they were going for twenty bucks a piece. And uh, man, I just looked at those and it's like, it'd be nice if they actually had a handle, and you got to wrap it in paracord or make your own handle for it. It's like it's half finished or something. But I guess they were pretty popular. I don't know. I didn't buy one, but they're they're a good size, and the idea was they'd be extremely lightweight and everything. But extremely lightweight but hard to hold so that's my thought on them but anyway um buck pack light series 420 hc black traction coating heavy duty nylon sheaths yeah made in usa though and still more bucks the buck vantage made in usa and the buck light max also made in usa man i see those still those aren't bad prices i guess uh wonder how much they go for now, the, uh, the Bucklight Max series. And uh, for some reason, I think that uh, Summit Liner Lock, uh, that's probably not made in the USA. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Then on the other side, you have, ooh, 
That's cool. Buck Classic Yellow Comfort Craft Pocket Knives. They probably need to change that name a little bit, but let's see. Contoured Yellow Delrin Handles. Nickel Silver Pins, Bolsters, and Color Field Shield. Brass Liners. 420HC. Made in USA. And uh, prices aren't that bad. I, those, I think, would have given uh, a case of the run for their money. I mean, those aren't uh, too bad at all. Kind of like the swell in the center of those. Those are pretty cool. Okay, let's scooch on down the page a bit, and we see the Buck Everyday Pocket Knives uh, and 420HC also. Uh, wood grain handles now. You actually pack of what it looks like. Brass liners, nickel silver pins, bolsters, and shields, and imported, which translates to China. I guess the biggie here is the Buck 5718 versus the Buck BU3363. Uh, 20 bucks versus 37 bucks, so $17 less, uh, for it to be made in China. Otherwise, it's essentially the same knife, uh, with a different handle, wood handle versus Delrin. 1099 for the solo. And 21.99 for the large four inch trapper. Okay, flipping the page and we run into case now and we got the second cut antique bone pocket knives and ooh the John Wayne Gray Bone pocket knives and uh case stag John Wayne knives. So a lot of stuff for the Duke today and also all the way over in the corner they got a Lincoln Penny kinda commemorative. I wonder about that. So the case 2009 Lincoln Penny Commemorative Congress set. Uh, 200th anniversary of the birth of the great emancipator with four scenes from his life features true sar surgical steel blades, smooth natural bone handles, brass pins, liner, blah, blah, blah. Three and five eighths inches closed, walnut display with Lincoln portrait, one each. Of the four pennies, so uh, well, there you go. Is this is 2009 2010? Each of those pennies was worth one penny, so that's 10 years. So this should really be 2000, 209 dollars and 95 cents. Uh, four cents is for those four pennies, uh, and uh, so for 209 dollars and 95 cents, you're getting a Case Congress in a walnut frame with a paper backing there with Lincoln's photo on it, but there's a certificate of authenticity. So, and it's not even like a real Lincoln Congress, it's just a four blade Congress. Lincoln carried a six blade Congress, so, but limited to 500 pieces with a long tail C serialization. Whew. Wow. Yeah, I don't think that was worth it. I'm guessing some people bought it, but I can't picture spending that kind of money for one knife and four pennies. Let's go visit that other great American, the Duke John Wayne gift sets. All right, those are a little bit better priced. Uh, ooh, that one's kind of cool. Trapo zipper lighter, Zippo lighter. Smooth old red bone handle, two piece gift set. So you got John Wayne on a lighter and the trapper, uh, for $91. That's not too bad. Or you have the, uh, this one has the case collectible medallion for 85 bucks. And then the gray bone, uh, Dukes. Those are, about ten or so dollars less. They're still more expensive than your basic, but here's the good ones, I guess. Uh, case stag John Wayne pocket knives. Those are pretty cool. I wonder if John Wayne carried a case knife. I'd bet money he probably carried an American-made pocket knife, but it'd be uh, really interesting to find out if it was actually a case. And moving right along. Ooh, I got that one there. But I didn't pay $66.99 for it. 
Ooh, and there's a, what is that? The uh, mini black horn. Let me see if I can zoom in on that mini black horn. What is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is the National Wildlife or Turkey Federation. What is it? National Wild Turkey Federation. A little mini black horn there. Oh, a turkey call. Yeah, pretty cool stuff going on there. Number 18, isn't it? But there's the biggie down there. Ooh, what is that? Case Green Stag Kodiak. 179.99. I don't understand why the Kodiak costs that much money, but it always does, it seems. It's always an expensive knife. But, uh, I guess that's why I haven't bought one. I, I'm not going to pay that kind of money for the Kodiak. True sharp stainless steel and everything else. I think the Kalinga looks better too, the uh, Buck Kalinga. Okay, let me get you all dizzy again and drag over to the other side here. Ooh, look at that. K70 Wood Swayback Gent. Uh, doesn't say anything about Tony Bowes there though. But up here, that's, this is the one I got. The uh, I wish I'd have got this one. This is great. Brown laser embellished bone. That's pretty cool. But this is the one I got. I got the dark red jig bone. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. I don't know why it's so expensive. I mean the tin, the, uh, the lure, everything. Yeah, I got that one though. And the uh, nice metal tin. Pretty cool. That one does look pretty good though. Ah, uh, yeah, cold steel. Time for cold steel. It's always in there, it seems. But th there's the cool one. I wonder if that's still around. Wonder how many people bought that one. The professional .625 blowguns. See those? That's pretty cool. I was really thinking about grabbing one of those, and I'm glad I didn't. The moment passed. I I, I got past my 13-year-old juvenile self and said, "Nah, I'm not going to grab the the blowgun. What am I going to do with a blowgun?" Of course, I guess it would have been kind of fun with the dartboard. In any case, and then you got the throwing knives and the safekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, slim stick. Yeah, but the blowgun, that was uh, all the rage back in 2010. I wonder if anyone else remembers when uh, I think it was Josh was using it on the uh, show and uh, was shooting things with the blowgun. <laughs> And then we're in uh, the the middle here with the, uh, painted ponies. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I I really like the um, yellow horse knives more than painted pony. But uh, I know everyone has their own followings with those things. And then you got the uh, citadel knives here too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and as you can tell, we've now gone into the higher end stuff. We got the Colonel Coon over here with the, the Queen made Colonel Coons. And, uh, if you notice here, let's try and zoom in again. There you go. The Colonel Coons answer to the Shatton Morgan, uh, uh, scout knife. What are these? Are these in, uh, orange bone? Stainless steel blades, brass pens were noted, and liners, nickel silver bolsters, and shields. I don't know what bone that was. I think it was in an orange bone, though. Got a little doctor's knife. Now, there's the, uh, the coon stripe mica pearl. I have the, uh, large toothpick in that, which is pretty cool. And then we got Queen City Delrin down here. Relatively low price. Man, that's not bad at all. Let me zoom out a bit. Yeah, those are uh, reasonable prices when you think about it. Forty bucks for a queen, fifty bucks for the doctor's knives, but that's not a bad price at all. Okay, flipping the page and we're into Gerber gear, the Gator Machete, 
and the George folding shovel. Yeah, I wonder how big that shovel is. I guess it's uh, time to zoom in again. Maybe I can see the size here. Uh, it doesn't look that big. Hopefully that isn't the actual size of the shovel shown, but it does not look that big of a shovel, though. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Looks kind of small. The Evo Jr. Guardian Backup Military Knife. Yeah, if you call it a military knife, it's a better knife. And ceramic sharpeners. The artifact keychain tool. I remember that thing. Yeah, I didn't grab that either. 75th anniversary pocket knife. Gator 2 folding gut hook. Ooh, that's kind of a cool one. That might have uh, gone up in value a little bit. The Freeman Exchange of Blade. Those are the kind of funky things that tend to go up in price. And then there we go. The Butterfly Opening Crux Multi-Tool and the Bypass Bruner with Bone Notch. I wonder what a bone notch is. Anyway, I guess you're doing more with it than just uh, pruning bushes if it's got a bone notch. Oh, and now it's time for the Victorinox Swiss Army Knives. And, uh, ooh, man, Swiss Champ XLT, $200.99. That's a bit steep. Uh, oh, the Swiss Champ XAVT, $349. I think I'll be passing on that one, too. Uh, Fieldmaster is 30 bucks. That's not bad. And the Huntsman, same price, $31, really. But they really haven't gone up that much in price when you think about it. There's the Stay Glow Classic. That's kind of hard to find these days. The same with the Stay Glow Climber on the other side. Classics over here. Let's zoom in. There's the climber. German trucker. That's not bad at all. And then over here was the stay glow. Fourteen ninety nine. Camper twenty three ninety nine. Fifteen ninety nine for the Boy Scout. These garden knives, they're still about the same price. And tinkers, who cares? I don't buy tinkers, but 15 bucks. That's about right, or 16.99. Yeah, so prices haven't jumped up that much. In any case, let's move on to the next page. Okay, yeah, here we go. Brian Yellowhorse, not David Yellowhorse, but some Brian Yellowhorse knives. Let's take a look at those. Like I said, I like the I like Brian Yellowhorse better than uh, Michael Prater. I like David Yellowhorse is the best, but Brian has come a long way since uh, 2010. Uh, Embiggen in the screen. Got the wolf, leaping deer, eagle, Indian. Deer head, your choice, two forty nine each. What we got up here? Oh man, the eagle and uh, Kentucky horse, huh? Oh, I see it now. Yeah, Kentucky horse, Navajo craftsman Brian Yellowhorse was born in the yeah, 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 towering house. People known for the creative creativity and gener for generations. See? Okay, so 420HC, these are probably bucks. Yeah, they're bucks. Some of them might not be bucks, but those two are definitely bucks. In any case, let's go over here. Genuine Eye brand, large one blade trappers. $74.99 each. Puma Damascus liner lock close out. Puma Tuya wood, Tuya wood, Tuya, Tuya, Tuya wood. Python, Cobra. Okay. All right. 
on to the next page. To ya! This cinematic card of farce is being brought to you by Skip the Show's Volcano Club. I don't know where I'm gonna go when the volcano blows. Actually, I know exactly where I'm going when the volcano blows. I'm going to the Volcano Club. All right, all you knife chatters, you gotta shut the fridge and get back from the can. It's back to the show. Well, there you go. Some things never change. There we go. Alabama National Championship Trappers. <laughs> Didn't they just make those again? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you got the uh, Frost Pearl and Abalone, $62.99. Uh, the case ones are $120, and they're just using what? Probably like a red bone or something. Can't read it very well. Yeah. Anyway, there you go, Bama fans. Uh, the frost cutlery added again. And then you got hen and rooster. Beautiful Damascus steel. I don't know about that part, but it is hen and rooster. So frost family collectors trappers. Uh, Nine ninety nine. Frost razor lock folders. Twenty four ninety nine. Deluxe Chef Ceramic Knives. Yeah, buddy. And Frost Still Warrior Trapper 4-Pack Blowout. 40 bucks. Hmm, 40 bucks for 4 trappers? Or 10 bucks a piece down below. Which way's cheaper? Actually, you can get these 3 down, these 4 down here at nine ninety nine each. Or these up here for thirty nine ninety nine each. You're gonna pay four cents more to buy these four trappers than the four on the bottom. But this one has three blades. Ooh, and the frost April twelve pack. I gotta zoom in on that one for sure. Look at that. Oh man. Some blood grooves twelve pack each month we offer a dozen first quality frost knives at a special price. While supplies left, this month's selection is the Little Menace Lockback. Ooh, man. You could buy 12 of them for $19.99. If I'd have bought all 12 of those for $19.99 back in 2010, I would have probably only lost uh, $17.99 at today's value. Wow. All right, moving on. Oh, more metal-like objects from Frost. Now we're into the fixed blades. These things have genuine steel-like blades and everything. Oh, we got survival knives, Frost Scout survival knives. And look at all those military knives there. Oh, wow. Let's zoom in again. Start at the top. The warrior sword and the ninja sword. Oh man. Jungle survivor. Patriot force. Combat fighter. Delta force one. Or is that Delta farce? Marine commander. Combat scout. Navy commander. Combat fighter. And then we move over to the other side. And yeah, buddy, we got all of the urban camo you can ever think of. Ooh, Safari Nighthawk. That kind of looks kind of cool. I like this, the way it looks. Maybe someone else has made one. I don't know, but that's kind of a cool one. This, the Safari Nighthawk. Someone should make that in a better quality. Uh, and then the Black Scout 3 and Black Scout 2. Silver Scout 1, Silver Scout 3. <sighs> Frost Kentucky Skinner. You can only use this knife when you're in Kentucky. If you're skinning anything outside of Kentucky, you will be arrested. Because this is a Kentucky Skinner. All right. Uh, Frost Slip Not Drop Point Skinner. Slipknot. Hmm. 
It's an interesting name. I think I'll go with the Kentucky Skinner instead. In any case, let's move on to the next page. Okay, it looks like we're halfway through and we're at 26 minutes already. I really should have wrapped this up. I can see how uh, how uh, Williams gets lost in this stuff because there is a lot of stuff, kind of cool stuff to look at. River's Edge Cutting Boards and Frost Mother's Day Doctor Knife and Frost World's Greatest Mom Trapper. Nothing says World's Greatest Mom like a trapper. Oh, and ooh, what's this? Knives Live TV. Let's zoom in on Knives Live TV. Our premiere show is moving into its fourth year of production. So four years going into 2010. So I guess the show started in, uh, what, 2006, 2007, something like that. That's kind of cool. Check times for shows. It was every Tuesday and every Friday. Or was it Monday, Tuesday, Friday? No, it's Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. That's what it was. Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, well. Let's uh, zoom out and move on to the next page. Okay, kitchen knives, moving on. Okay, we've reached the Rough Rider portion of the show, it looks like. And, uh, well, we see all the mini knives on one side. And then, uh, oh, at the top here. Oh, and those are all new. New Rough Rider mini knives. Tiny toothpicks, small lady legs, and mini peanuts, mini congresses, and mini canoes. All in the mini Rough Rider line. And notice it's R-I-D-E-R. -E Ooh, and on the other side, let's see here. What do we got on the other side? New Rough Riders. I'm going to embiggen again. Outdoorsman Series Lockback Mini Trapper. And the Granddaddy Barlow. And they called it a Granddaddy Barlow. Five and an eighth inches closed. Is that the saw cut bone? Yeah, I got that one. I got the saw cut bone. And right below that, we got uh, some of the Stonework series knives. Now, that's not new for that year. I know that because uh, I had already bought some of these before then. But got the uh, muskrat and uh, large toothpick. Yeah, I got, well, I got everything in the Stonework series. What's below that? Mini pocket knives again. Those are all new. That's pretty cool. Anywho, let's move on to the next page. Okay, and we got more Rough Riders. We're going into the tortoise shell and just some random knives. But the biggie on this page is the uh, Arrowhead Imitation Turquoise Pocket Knife Series, uh, which was a collaboration with... Uh, uh, Brian Yellowhorse and Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And that looks like the entire series there. Let me, uh, zoom in a bit. Yeah, and that's the whole setup there. The baby elephant toe, the muskrat, the peanut, the trapper, the congress, stockman canoe, baby canoe, lockback. That's like the Mustang style of lockback. A whittler, the double lockback, and then, uh, the mini toothpick. I wish I had to put a large toothpick in this one. This is really a cool series. Uh, note the series of dots on the shield. The dots represent sacred numbers recognized by the Cherokees, which is interesting considering uh, Brian Yellowhorse is Navajo. Uh, and below there... Yeah, if... Uh, they would have stuck with that coal miner. I've never seen a coal miner knife with that stamp on it. That would have been nice if they had put that stamp on it. But no, they got this on it. Uh, all right, enough on the coal miner. Um, man, they never. I've never seen it. Maybe they used it at one time, but I sure don't remember it. Uh, Anyway, very disappointing series. Man, the editing in this thing is going to really suck, but there you go. Uh, imitation tortoise shell starting up. 
and uh, Redbone over there. Four blade utility scout knife. I got that one. That is that's the one you want to get. If you're going to get a Rough Rider scout knife, look for this one. They're getting harder and harder to find, but this is the one that works. The, the cap lifter works on it. The screwdriver works. This is the can opener. It will work, but it's not the safest can opener in the world, but it works as a great box cutter, and it saves your main blade from getting covered in tape, and it's also got a better reamer on it, too. All around, this is just the better of the Rough Rider Scout knives. Sorry, Camp King. Who the gun stock? Need to get one of those. That one's looking pretty good. Maybe toothpicks. Imitation tortoise shell. I got most of everything from the imitation tortoise shell. Okay, more Rough Riders. You got the saw cut bone and a few other things going on there. That lock back down there, the three and a half inch lock back with the finger grooves, that looks pretty cool. There you got another gun stock. Large lock back on the other side and a few other things. Uh, let's move on. And now it's time for marbles and some of their imitation tortoise shell. And, uh, and we got the marble safety folders and you got the shave your whiskers just like grandpa. Oh, yeah. And then all the orange machetes over on the other side and marbles, Damascus caper, marbles, dag fix blades, so on and so forth. Let's see, which of these marbles uh, tortoise shell do I have? Let me zoom in a bit. And, um, I got the large toothpick, uh, Congress Whitler, and the Jumbo Trapper. Got to tell you, that one looks kind of good. The uh, Serpentine Trapper looks pretty good. I've got the stockman in the uh, canoe and the muskrat in the in the Rough Rider lineup, so I didn't bother to get them in uh, in uh, marbles. But only marbles made the large toothpick, so I had to grab it there. Okay, time for Bowie knives, and uh, we've got a lot of them there. You got the man's knife, which uh, looks like the uh, Western Bowie. Let me zoom in a bit here. Uh, the Alamo buoy. Uh, yeah, like we know, it's got a certificate of authenticity. I don't think it was authentic enough that it was actually at the Alamo. Oh, I like that Kyber Pass buoy. I like that one. I think I always wanted to grab one like that because it's got such a really nice flowing lines, but I never did because of the price, sixty nine ninety nine. It's like, could you come out with it in stainless steel and make it thirty bucks? I got the uh, Mountain Man buoy here by Rough Rider. Mine doesn't have any kind of stamping on the blade. These uh, the trim hanging off the back there, that that stuff uh just breaks real quick it just falls right off i need to get a cap for the end of it that's what i want to do i keep wanting to put a new cap on the end because the uh, little suede frill just falls off i cut the frill off of the leather sheath the sheath looks better without the frill and man knife black beckwood indoor extra thick stainless steel blade brass guard i don't see oh yeah brass guard 1999 to pick Tommy Goff custom knives. Yeah, I remember those. And then your Tennessee humpback or your Missouri belt knife. What we got over on the other side here. JJ's knife kit. Uh, back in stock. Sawmill cutlery. Sawmill cutlery is still back in stock. Man, I got to give credit to William's Knife Life. This is not easy going through these magazines and looking at everything and talking about it at the same time and now we're what are we oh rambo first blood part two and then samurai dagger set and this looks like a bunch of uh of the junk stuff that uh yeah this is straight out of the knife cave i think almost everything here ninja throwing stars Ooh, no throwing cards i remember that isn't that based off of some cartoon character 
uh, I don't know, gamble, the gambit or something like that, or somebody who throws cards and kills people with them. Ninja throwing cards. Uh, and Rambo First Blood Part 2 Boot Knife Signature Edition. 50 bucks. Ooh, and there we go. Uh, yeah, I wonder what Disney had to say about this one. Pirates of the High Seas. Arr. I'm a pirate of the high sea. Look at me watch. Yeah, pirates. Sword of Robin Hood. And then the usual crap. Okay, next page. Okay, we got swords. We got a Civil War buoy with black. Yeah, I don't think it's an original Civil War buoy. You know, that's the thing that drives me nuts. And I seriously, I, I have the Rough Rider one that was the old cult one that has Damascus, that has a Damascus blade. But I wish someone would come out with just a nice looking D guard buoy that, um, you know, didn't have any blade etching on it or anything else made out of a good like 10, 1070 or 1080 carbon steel blade, proper handle grip. You know, it could be a wood grip. It could be a stag grip. It could be a bone grip. I don't care. I just wish someone would make a proper D guard buoy. And uh, I doubt anyone ever will. It's always like some kind of commemorative crap or something. The, uh, the Rough Rider one was all right, but, and it was big and it was beefy and everything, but uh, just didn't quite hit it either. It's the only one I bought so far, but I really want a good one. And then, uh, ooh, Authentic Army Surplus. Military Machete. That's not a military machete. Uh, Symbols of Freedom Pocket Watch. Uh, what we got up here? All right, all of the uh, Zippo lighters. Authentic Army Surplus Shovel. All right, that might be authentic army surplus shovel but i tell you what it's not a u.s army uh e-tool i can tell you that much right now looks more like a german e-tool maybe west german or east german e-tool 1980 more likely west german i don't think they're quite getting everything from the warsaw pact yet and uh 7.62 millimeter, 30 caliber ammo can. No, 7.62 millimeter. That's for the M60 machine gun. Okay, lighters and goop. If you're interested, just freeze frame. I'm moving on. Okay, we've got SOG on one side and Condor tool and knife on the other. And I tell you what, this is a page I would have stopped at. And I kept wanting to get it and wanting to get it, and I never got around to getting it. And now the thing is outrageously priced. And that would be the uh, Condor Gold Lock. There we go. That's something I always wanted to grab, the Gold Lock. I just love the shape of that. It's got such nice flowing lines and everything. And that wooden handle and everything. I heard... uh that it wasn't the world's easiest uh, knife to control or anything, but it just looked really cool. Yeah. Anyway, so let's move on to the next page. Uh, Shrade Old Timer. Ooh, look at down there. Shrade USA made fire and ice tempered small trappers. I didn't notice that. This is the page that I would have just skipped over back in the day. I really just never got around to Shrade. But uh, I did buy a couple. I mean, I have uh, some large toothpicks by Imperial Shrade, I think. But this is kind of interesting. Stainless steel blades with special imprint and tang stamp features stainless steel blades. Man, I did not see those. How many? Oh, limited to only 400 pieces. Three and three quarter inches closed. That's pretty cool. Uh, 69, 70 bucks. I bet you they're a little more, especially made in USA. And, uh, Shrade, Uncle Henry, Bear Paw, Lockback. That was not made in the USA. 
Yeah, this would have been a page that I would have just zipped right by 10 years ago, and it would be a page I'm zipping right by now. Anything on here that catches your eyes, go ahead and stop, but I'm moving on. I guess I could have stayed back there for a moment, seeing how it was the last page, but uh, anyway, Knives Live TV there, and special purchase, Buck Folding Omni Hunter, made in USA, 1999, retail price 58 bucks. wow. Yeah, so retail price is 58 bucks. that would mean that the normal selling price would have been around what uh between 25 and 35 dollars probably because we know retail price is way up there so still a good price especially today uh 20 bucks limit three limit three per order so you got to order three and then you got to order again for three and order again for three so you have to keep paying more for the uh, postage, I guess. Anywho, I guess that uh, got us through a magazine. I'm sure William's Knife Life does a better job than I did. But in any case, uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pious. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.